Welcome back to this latest episode of Japan's Top Business Interviews. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, president of Dale Kani Tokyo Training. Today is a very special guest, a very old friend of mine. In fact, one of the longest running friendships I've had in Japan. 30 years now, Robert Roach. Robert, welcome. You are the president and CEO of Oaklawn Marketing and have spent a long period of time in Indeed. China and Indeed. back and forth now. But, uh, you know, when we met in 1992, uh, I just arrived in Nagoya to set up an operation there. You'd already been on the ground for a few years. So, and uh, you went into a, a number of successful businesses. Mm. But let's sort of go back to the beginning. How was it you got to Japan and how was it sure. you started these sure. businesses? Well, it is good to see you. So yeah, I'm glad this great. is, uh, man, it's been a long, long time. It's been a so, long time, hasn't it? Um, yeah. 30 years, hard to believe. Um, yeah. But I think it, you know, my, I first came to Japan as, a, as an exchange student, like so many others did. Mm. Um, and um, um, I, um, Went to school in the United States, Illinois. So our school had an exchange program with the Nanzan University in mm -hmm. Nagoya. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where I got off the boat, so to speak. You know what I mean? I spent a year at Nanzan uh, learning Japanese, um, doing the best I could do, um, and um, met a woman at that time who was currently my wife. Um, so I kind of got hooked on Japan, and Nagoya, I mean, that was part of the deal, you know. So I just really started in Nagoya. And then after I graduated college, um, I decided to go to law school in America, Denver. And then during the middle of Denver, I was, uh, I was able to also study in Nanzan's on the Hogakubu, the law, the law department. Hmm. And I was about to choke Osei and a Ken Kusei for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and then that was a, quite an eye-opening you know, um, thing for me. It was very hard. My, my Japanese skills were okay, but not legal level. Um, now I got, you know, our phones and stuff. If I had the tools we had today, I would have done much, it would have been much easier, a lot less stress uh, mm -hmm. than it was at the time. And then I graduated law school and then um, pretty much without a job, without any idea of what I was going to do, I, um, I moved back to, uh, to Nagoya. My father's theory with me was always... You know, I was a little bit of a, kind of a, not a great student growing up. You know, I'm eight of nine children. So mm -hmm. by the time my parents got around to raising me, it was more, they were a little tired. Mm -hmm. And my dad called it more like crowd control than it really was rearing children. <laughs> so I kind of was able to kind of do what I wanted. I mm -hmm. had a lot of freedom growing yeah. up. And um, so he said, you be a lawyer and then you can go do what you want to do. Mm. So I did it. I went to law school. I graduated. Um, and then I moved back to Japan. Hmm. So when you go back to Japan, you, you started, uh, well, when I met you, mm. you had a, a type of semi-real estate business yeah, in terms of right. helping people locate accommodation, that type of thing. That's right. how we met. So what we, how did you start? What did you do in your first well, stages? Yeah, you know, that's, um, again, I chose Nagoya and I chose Japan. And at that time, this was the early 80s when I first mm. came, you know, foreigners were still special. Mm -hmm. um, the Japanese really wanted to learn English. There were mm -hmm. lots of good jobs. You're making 4000 an hour, 5000 an hour, sometimes 10000 an hour to teach English. Um, it's very easy. It, it was very casual. You know what I mean? So I knew I could come and make a living. So when I started, I really didn't have any, um, any skills, really. I didn't have any plan other than I wanted to be in the Goya, you know, with this person. Mm -hmm. And um, um, and I just knew I could figure something out. You know, I, I knew what this local, I knew what salaries were at the time, and I knew I could probably make as much or more just teaching English if I had to, mm -hmm. um, then working at one of those very hard to get jobs at Toyota or yeah. at Denso or, you know what I'm talking yeah, about, exactly, or, yeah. you know, wherever. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I think by that time, I was pretty unemployable. I don't think anybody really would have given me a job because I mm -hmm. just never really worked. I never, I mean, I, I worked construction growing up, but that's not work. I mean, that's mm -hmm. work. I mean, you know mm -hmm. what a hard mm -hmm. day of work is, but mm -hmm. it's not really skills based. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a, was a lawyer and nobody really needed a lawyer. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't quite sure I really wanted to be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it was just, I just enjoyed the fact that I came back. It was just, you know, I'm making a living, and um, just one thing led to another. And yeah. Yeah. And what was the first major business you got into? Well, the first major business I got into was um, the importation of uh, 
um, clamshells that were used as the, the core of the cultured pearls. And I said, mm. I, I got into that business not successfully. Mm -hmm. So it turned out to be a complete wash. Mm -hmm. I also brought in a container of, I thought, very cool what, clocks. Mm -hmm. They were like neon. There was a black light at the bottom, mm -hmm. and the design was, it was very, very cool. Mm -hmm. um, and I walked through Nagoya in the Chikagai, in, in the, the basement stores there, right? May it's Nagoya Station and Sakai. Mm -hmm. Knocked everybody who could have any, any use for a clock and resell the clock. I, well, hours and hours and days and months and just, and it didn't work. None of those worked. And it, I learned that it's easier to buy things than sell things. Mm -hmm. And just because I think something's cool mm -hmm. doesn't really mean someone else will. Mm -hmm. and, and then it was also the introduction to the cartel. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that there was a, this, this big complex industry related to cultured pearls. I mean, mm -hmm. anybody, everybody but me knew that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. if you asked any, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And so therefore I kind of got a little over my skis on that. Mm -hmm. But the first um, you know, successful business was, um, was um, I think when me, me and Harry Hill met like in 1990 at the first ABCN meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it, the precursor and ABCN for- ABCN means? The American Business Community in Nagoya, Nagoya which right? was a precursor for the ACCJ Chu. The chamber, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so in putting all that together, I got to know quite a few of the, um, the American, like the Lockheeds, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. you know, what was it? The FSX, uh, what is it? Uh, Raytheon, mm -hmm. Boeing's, all these mm -hmm. guys that were like, wow, I, you know, I never met, I didn't know who these guys were. They, they were very, very top end companies. Mm -hmm. the, the, the men, mostly at that time, it was all men who were leading those companies were just fantastic guys. Mm -hmm. They were, they were very much in, in mentoring mode. Mm -hmm. They, they mentored me and Harry a lot, mm -hmm. um, you know, through, you know, kind of activity, voluntary activity. We did the walkathon. Yep. You know, must have been going a long the time then. Thirty some years now. Yeah. Me and Harry were the were we weren't the chairman of it, the event, but we did all the work. Yeah. You know, that was another piece of advice my father said when yeah. I was talking about this. He said, "Take the worst job, but do all the work, mm -hmm. and make these guys Look be great. heroes." Yeah. So, and me and Harry did that, and mm -hmm. um, so me and Harry we met each other, and we just said, you know. And I'm sure you've interviewed Harry in the past. You know him yeah, as Hilarious long as me, been, right? No, he's been on the show. And, you know, we looked at each other and we said, we're going to love each other the rest of our life or we're going to hate each other the rest of our life. Mm -hmm. And we just decided to, to just kind of be friends and partners. And that day we said, we'll make a business together. Mm -hmm. And that turned into H&R Consultants. Mm, that's right. And at the same time, he had his own business that was a little bit, I think, related to travel. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and he had an, he was a sports agent and he mm -hmm. did all kinds of very cool stuff. A lumber business at one stage too, I think, didn't he have a lumber business? Or we did that, that together. Yeah, that we did together, that. That was subsequent at H and R. That came, later. Okay. Yeah, that came oh. at H and R. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then I had this little fledgling import export business, not really import business. And then we did H and R together. And then he did his own thing. And then I did my own thing over here. Mm -hmm. And as it turns out, H and R really supported. Mm. It was a pretty good business. Mm. Um, it's, it's, I mean, and again, the guys were running it. We sold it for various reasons, but now it's actually still doing still well. And still yeah, going yeah, well. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, they've done actually better than when we were running it, they've made it bigger, so mm. you know, good on them. Um, so then Oaklawn Marketing kind of evolved. And tell us a story there. about why the name Oaklawn. Well, again, I'm not a really creative guy, so my, there's, a, there's an old guy, Mr. Nakamura, he's my part, original partner. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he's an old, crusty... Is Nagamore's son still with us? He is with us. Oh, yeah, well, he's that's 70, great. I mean, four, yeah, five, that's six. fabulous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't he's, seen him for, I don't know how many yeah, years. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a, quite a dandy old man now. Um, yeah. um, no, he's a great guy. Um, but we were just delivering something to this, one of our suppliers. We did a lot of parallel import at the time, mm -hmm. Tiffany and... Mm -hmm. and, and um, so, sorry, Oak Lawn. Where does the yeah. name come from? Oh, okay, yeah. So, anyway, so Oak Lawn comes from, um, we were driving back from a delivery... And he goes, we need a name for our company. We didn't have a name for the company. And he says, he goes, where are you from? And he knew, but he, I said Chicago. He goes, oh, that's a crappy name. <laughs> Too many bad images of Chicago. He goes, really, really from? Because no one's really from yeah. Chicago. Yeah. I mean, there is. But when you're in Japan, he says, you know, I don't want to say Oak Lawn. And he said Oak Lawn. So he said, great. 
So we just pulled the name out, yeah. and it was Oaklawn Marketing. How the big decisions are really made. Yeah. Right. And then my wife that night, you know, we, we, we had, I think we had my youngest son. She, you know, we needed a logo. So she, we had these what is a word book or something. Yeah, here you go, that's books for your kids. And there was an oak tree, and we kind of took a lawn, and we just kind of copied and pasted, and, and that's the logo today. Wow. 30 years later, 20-something years later. Yeah. But it was just my hometown. Um, mm -hmm. And so, very simple. Again, we didn't really burn a lot of juice doing, mm -hmm. you know, surveys and things like that. Yeah. We just did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so Oglon started in importing, and then at some stage you got into TV shopping. You, yes. You yeah. saw what was happening in the States with the big, powerful uh, marketing efforts going on there for TV shopping. Mm -hmm. And you had the concept to bring that to Japan. Can you talk a little bit about Yeah, that? I would say that you're giving me more credit than I deserve. So originally what we did, we were, we were selling um, in parallel imported Tiffany and then um, Land's End like, uh, canvas bags. And we sold those to just other wholesalers. Hmm. I imp we imported them. Um, we went around the States. We went to the different Tiffany stores and bought the things in retail. You know, the exchange rate shifted from being 200 to 100. So when there was parity at each my yen, 10,000 yen and $100, and, um, it was, I mean, it was each, it was, it was 10,000 yen and $50. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, it was 10,000 yen and $100. Mm -hmm. So we could go into a retail setting in America, buy it at 50, ship it over here, sell it at 70% of retail, and no one could get Tiffany. Mm -hmm. And we did that for a while. And then Mr. Nakamura, um, stumbled upon this TV shopping company. And they said, hey, we'll sell your stuff on TV. And I said, fantastic. And then they said, but you gotta go on TV. Mm. And I said, mm, I don't know if I like that. And I, you know, again, I, if any, you know, you probably know all these guys, Kent Derrickett, Dave Spector, and all these guys. I would see them on TV and say, that's the easiest job in the world. That has gotta be the, I know Dave is a good friend of mine now even. And I was so dismissive of those guys and then I have to go on TV, that's hard. Yeah. It's way, way harder than, 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 than it looks. And I hated it, and, but I had to do it. This guy said, I will not buy your stuff unless you go on TV. So there's me showing Tiffany on Japanese mm. TV shopping. You know, there's a lot of interesting stories with that. One time my mother-in-law, and again, this is on TV everywhere, you know, and uh, she would, every Sunday, we'd go to my in-law's house for dinner and she would critique my my performance oh, okay. and she'd say you know that's really not how you say it in Japanese mm. and you should try it like this and she was relatively helpful mm. um, but then what she didn't realize was that some of these were taped mm. so we'd go on the one Sunday and she'd say hey you made a mistake and then the following Sunday she goes you're still making the mistake yeah. you're not listening to me I said no yeah. it's a tape so it's kind of like six at a time well, yeah yeah so yeah I'll fix it in two months <laughs> yeah wait till, wait till we get back in the studio yeah. so to me it was a it was a very eye-opening um thing to to mm -hmm. see how it worked and and and, and the, it, this was uh, Mr. Yamazaki it was uh I think Waku Waku Terebi Shopping you know mm -hmm. and um we were able to, we, he, he really made us go in and, and we had to help him do the shipping. Mm. So we went to his warehouse and our products we had to put in the bags and, and, and stick the label on it. And then he even had to go out his place on Saturdays and help clean the office. And this was old school Japan, man. You mm. know what I mean? And you know, this, you, you talk his leadership, that's how he led, man. Mm. You will do it this way. Mm. And, um, you know, then we saw the call center, and our, a lot of our staff had to be in the call center to help him, you know, take orders. And that was a great learning experience for me mm. because I really didn't know how to do anything, really. Mm. I mean, I just, I was willing. I was willing to try, but mm. we were introduced to the very core of what TV shopping was in Japan at the time. Mm. And, and it was quite evident that you had to do everything yourself. Mm. I wound up to on the show doing a promotion for Aussie Australia jewelry. Opals. That's right, Opals. Opal jewelry. Remember, Remember that? that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. You did better than me. You're more of a ham than I am. <laughs> um, Harry liked the show as well. Harry really enjoyed it. He's, yeah. he's a front of the camera guy. I'm a bit yeah. behind the camera guy. Well, exactly right. That's where we did a lot. We worked yeah. really closely. I remember that, yeah, in the studio. Yeah. That was with, with, uh, with Koyama. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. with yeah. Yamazaki-san. Yeah. And, um, and then in that period of time, for some reason, very serendipitously, we were introduced to a Canadian company who were looking for a distributor in Japan. Hmm. 
and they had the media of the um, what was it? It was a CNN Pan Asian feed. Mm-hmm. So they were showing their products, like at the time DD7. There was a Walker. There was a pillow, contour pillow, I think. Lots, five or six, ten different products that were that were being beamed up from Atlanta to the to the Pan Asian satellite. And they were selling it in all these countries. And as it turns out, it was a couple months before that. I would see it on CNN. This was, and then it was like you had to call Hong Kong or Indonesia. Hong Kong was the closest place because at the end of the ad, it had a map of a flag, and you'd call there. And there was no Japan flag. And as it turns out, we became the Japan flag for that. Mm. And it was another just very serendipitous, very lucky connection. Um, the guy had one requirement. We didn't lie to him. Hmm. He goes, I pay for the media, but you have to tell me exactly how many you sell. And you can't lie. And it was like pretty easy. Yeah, sure, not a problem. And the phone started ringing. Hmm. And it was like manna. Hmm. We're just sitting in the office, and somebody's calling. Hmm. And they'd like some DD7. And hmm. then we'd write it down. And somebody called 20 minutes later, and they want a pillow. And the phone just ding, 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 ding. And I, you know, I mean, it was like the craziest thing. Um, How many people are in the organization by this Five time? or six. So it's still tiny. Yeah, and then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and then, so we, you know, but we, maybe 10, you know, but we, we were already selling to this guy. Mm-hmm. So, we, you know, that's why I think they contacted us. Mm-hmm. So then we would take that information, bring it to this Mr. Yamazaki and say, hey, we got these 10 products that are being aired on TV. This one is selling like crazy. Can we try this on your show? Mm. So, so Tiffany was replaced by, let's say, DD7. Mm-hmm. So then, wow, it worked. And then that was, I was demonstrating that. And, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it was like, the, I was, you know, was, anyway, that, so then DD7, then there was a walk, and then we had a pet glove, and then, uh, 20, you know, lots of different products. And, you know, you, you, you know me, we've known each other for a long time. I'm a l- relatively, um, um, I don't give up easy. I don't want to say t- overly aggressive, but I'm a relatively aggressive person. Um, I do speak enough, I speak pretty good Japanese, so I can have a conversation with a lot of people who for- normal foreigners can't have a conversation with. Mr. Yamazaki was one. He didn't know nothing about America, didn't care about America. He was a very, very local. He was like, he lived out in Shippocho. It wasn't even Nagoya. It was in Shippocho. This was like outside of Nagoya. And I was getting pressure from our supplier to, you know, just do the infomercial. There's a 29 minute show behind this little three minute segment you're putting on the show that you're demonstrating yourself. And the guy said, you're a great demonstrator, but you're not that good. You know what I mean? (laughs) We have these guys, we're in the studio in America. We make these infomercials. And I know what infomercials were. I grew up with them, the pocket mm-hmm. fishermen and all those things, Ron Popeil and all those wonderful guys mm-hmm. on late night TV. So it was a, kind of a, a prolonged discussion with Mr. Yamazaki to, to try to convince him to just, instead of taking this hour time he had with 15 products, three minutes of pop, you know, to 30 minutes of one product. Mm, that would have been a radical shift for he him. He wasn't ready for it. And I would ask him once a week, <clears throat> twice a week, because we went over there every day delivering stuff and doing this stuff. And I said, come on, man, we should try this. What do you think we should try this? And I got him to do quite a few things out, out of his comfort zone. Like, he actually prepaid us for a lot of stuff. I could explain to him that, you know, I don't know what your cost of money is, but I can give you a 10% better deal than that guy right there. He, he's selling something different. So... It's much more economically sound for you, and he was, he was, he was, he, he went with it. Mm. But this was really a bridge too far for him. Mm-hmm. It was, a, it, it's, I, I don't know what it was, but it was just too much. Mm-hmm. And after a point, you know, and it, it, it was a little bit angry on his side. He said, "If you think this is such a good idea, young man, take your own GD money mm-hmm. and go do it yourself." Mm. And we did. Mm. And then, I bet he regretted boom. that decision in the he end. He did, and he made some very poor. He owned twenty percent of our company, and because we were so successful, he forced us to buy him, sell him his, buy his shares at the price he paid. All right, which was like twenty grand for twenty percent of the company. Nihakuman. and it was the guy was, and again, our, that part of our business naturally died. Um, but then this was then this was the kind of phase two of, of mm. uh, 
you had your own studio, you had your own warehouse, you had like a really sophisticated operation, as I recall. Eventually we did, but yeah. at this point, we were just dubbing the shows. Right. We were just, we were going to his, he had a very sophisticated studio. Right. He okay. had all this wonderful stuff. Right. We didn't have anything. Right. All we had were the tapes from America that we dubbed and then connections in, in and we, then we very li few connections in the media business. Mm -hmm. And then we just kind of walked through the media business. And again, that's where Mr. Nakamura was a genius. Mm -hmm. he, he knew all these old timers in the media and we hired them and they had agencies and they walked us in. And, you know, it was one of these things to where I would go and I would, I remember, it, I will never forget it, it was right on Densu Dori, we were at KBS Kyoto, and I was talking to the, to, to the Bucho and the sales director of, of KBS Kyoto. Kyoto's a big city, big enough city, and, you know, and uh, I said, you know, in America, they do 24-hour TV, and they can't really sell their two o'clock to six o'clock, so there's all kinds of infomercials on it. I noticed that you don't even air anything after 1.30. Mm -hmm. You don't pick it up till 5.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Can't you sell me that time? Mm -hmm. And I was just, went everywhere to it. And this guy looked at me in the Ginza, right? And said, Japanese go to bed. Nobody is awake at two o'clock in the morning in Japan. And with a straight face, you know what I mean? I know for a fact that I've been up past two o'clock in the morning in Japan, in Ginza, <laughs> and when I'm up, there's a lot of people up. And what we found was that they, they just didn't see it. This guy just didn't see it. Mm. But we weren't able, I was not able, I did not have the power, I did not have the, I guess, the, the sales ability to convince this guy to open up that time of day. Mm. But right at that time, because we started this infomercial during the normal time, Sumitomo, Mitsubishi, and all the big hitters thought this was an opportunity for them. Mm -hmm. And they all jumped into the business. We thought it was going to be bad for us. But as it turns out, they could talk to KBS Kyoto mm -hmm. and say, hey, what are you doing with that dead time? Mm -hmm. So they bought Monday and Wednesday. I bought Tuesday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. Somebody else bought Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. So they opened the door. I opened the door for you. Hmm. And, and because we already had such a, we already were dealing with the TV stations, we were able to be one of, hmm. which was quite interesting. Usually, you know, again, we're just a bunch of foreign guys from the Goya, from the countryside, right? And so that was a very, very interesting At that point, how big was the company? Oh, God. Millions, but I don't even know, 10 million, no, 20 no, million. No, no, not talking about dollars, I'm talking about people. Oh, at that point, uh, 15, 20. So it's still pretty small. Oh, yeah, yeah, pretty small, mm. pretty small, well, I suppose. So who's actually running Maybe 40, maybe 40. Me and Nakamura, son. So you're actually running the business. You're actually yeah, yeah. running the people. Yeah. What's going on? Mm. Yeah. And this was probably mm, early 90s. Mm. Yeah, the early 90s. Mm. Um, and then it just kind of... You know, we moved offices a couple of times and because we were doing some of the CNN stuff. We would deliver from our office, and we couldn't leave our office. a fire hazard. We could not leave our office until this Sagawa guy came and took all the stuff out of the office. Like, the door was blocked, and we'd talk to him through the boxes. Yep. And he'd just go up and down the elevator for an hour. You know, we're in this, you know, seventh-floor office. <laughs> but, it, again, when you're an entrepreneur mm. and when you're, you start with nothing, mm. Each one of those is a hundred bucks. Yeah. Each in my end. Yeah. And you're like, whoa, get it out. Well, that one's 150 bucks. Yeah. Get it out. Yeah. We'll do it. We'll wait. <laughs> we'll wait. Yeah. yeah. We'll wait. Yeah. <laughs> get it done. And so, in terms of uh, hiring people, in terms of leading people, you know, you started very small, so mm. it was very incremental, I guess, in size. But was it? Difficult to recruit people to come and work for you, or was it because mm. Nakamura-san was there as the Japanese face of the sure. company, did that make it easier? I'd say it made it a little easier, but we were not um, like a, a destination that mm. people went to work. Mm. Uh, you know, we, we met some people through, you know, no, we're not. A, we were not a first or second choice. How about mm. that? And plus, mm. we're in Nagoya, mm. so you got to remember that we're not even in Tokyo mm. to where there's enough mm. avant-garde people mm -hmm. to want to work for a startup. Mm -hmm. This is Nagoya, so it's so some. How did you convince them to come on board? And work yeah, for these. I, I hate to say it. They were. Guys. They were a lot like me. Mm. They didn't have any other choice. 
Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I had no other choice. I had to start this business. Yeah, yeah. So there was one kid we hired where, where, and again, this was, and you do favors for people. I mean, this is how the world goes around, right? So there was a, a, a guy who was running the Goy's office for Sun TV. And he had somehow connected to this kid's father who introduced him to work at this one company. And the kid went to interview at the company. And, and again, it was all set up, right? That's how Japan is. Like, and he was going to work there. He's right out of college. You know what I mean? And it was a pretty good company. In Nagoya, it was, it was one of the big, bigger companies. And um, not Toyota level, but, you know, everybody, very famous company. And um, the kid walked into the interview. And the first question was, um, um, you know, so why do you want to work here? And the kid said, I don't know. So his interviewer said, get out of my office. So this kid basically got fired before he was hired. So the guy from the TV station says, I have a problem. I promised I'd get this kid a job, and he just graduated college. And they, to knock, he went to Nakamura and said, can this kid work for you? And that's the kind of people we got. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we didn't really, it wasn't... And tell me he became a legend later. He, he was all right. He How was all right. He, he was all right. He went from being, couldn't even make the first interview to becoming uh, a legend. But, but Nakamura was very, um, you know, I mean, he was very Japanese. Mm -hmm. You cannot say the things he, today, that he said then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there. You know, we worked six days a week. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people would come in and say, hey, I got my friends getting married on Saturday. And... I really wish, you know, like, can I have Saturday off? And he sits back and he goes, I suppose, yeah, go ahead. And the guy's feeling good. Oh, I thought he was a tough guy. He's, not, he's a nice guy. And he goes, by the way, you can take Monday off too if you want. You know, take Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off. You know, take the rest of your life off if you want. Mm -hmm. So then the guy just walks out of the office and works on Saturday. Yeah, you can't do that anymore. Tough. He was a tough, tough man. He was a tough man. Leadership. So, but again, that's that was his style. So, and my style was was 100% different. 180%. I was always easygoing. I thought I was. Not everyone doesn't say that, but I like to joke. I like to mm -hmm. kind of goof around a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I work hard, a lot mm -hmm. of hours, mm -hmm. but I don't want it to be treachery. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I don't need to suffer. I don't need you to suffer. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of our, our, our the well, management, you've got, yeah. you got two completely different styles of leadership yeah. here. So, how does that work in a, a small company of you know thirty to forty people? It's uh, quite chaotic. Yeah, I would think it so. It was super chaotic, and my so wife. So if they went to him and yeah. didn't get anywhere, they'd probably come to you and see if they get a, a better yeah. deal. We didn't really do much of that. No. Okay. We didn't. We didn't play. Like the we had enough, with the parents, right? Yeah, we had enough direct conflict okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying in terms yeah. of we're going left or we're going right yeah. we had enough direct conflict that we didn't that, that was like nothing I, right. I would that, that he never did it to me and I never did it to him right, okay. it was we just had fundamentally very strong beliefs in what we thought the company should do mm -hmm. and be and um and again, this was just the battle of the old culture of Japan, mm. and then, and I'm, I don't even have the new culture of Japan. I have this something else, mm -hmm. right? Um, and again, I, I I know a lot about. It. I speak Japanese. I do all that stuff, and I've been here a long time, and I've studied law. And I, mm. but at the end of the day, I'm not Japanese. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always thought that you know my style was steal the best from Japan and the U.S. Mm -hmm. and then make something out of that. And mm -hmm. if it's doesn't help you from the Japan side, don't do it. Mm. If it doesn't help you from the U.S. side or Western side, don't do it. So how long before Oakland became quite big? Um, I'd say that was the turning point. Mm -hmm. um, we, um, once we started to, to get our own media, mm -hmm. then we, we were able to kind of grow exponentially. And then you started buying other media in Japan as well, not yeah. just in Kyoto, right? So you took oh, the yeah, model yeah, yeah, yeah. and template we went everywhere. through yeah, the whole yeah. country, right? And it was all through these old gentlemen <laughs> who you retired from, you know, Nippon TV and you know, guys from the Goya TV and then mm -hmm. different Keiretsu, the mm -hmm. Sun TV guy. Mm -hmm. And then you get the different Keiretsu and you get mm -hmm. the... You get the uh, the local TV mm -hmm. as opposed to the, the key stations the and the independents. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then cable happened. Mm -hmm. Right about that time with CNN, cable happened. So then they had nobody buying their time, so we, we did a lot of revenue share with them. Hmm. 
and then you know then, then the whole digital thing happened so i'd say that we probably got to 50 or 100 people then we always had a bunch in the call center mm -hmm. then we had our own call center that probably right. had a couple hundred people mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah um and we're doing a lot more automated now so the head counts down mm -hmm. um but um so yeah we started to to build more and then we started to because we're on tv so much then the recruiting became a little bit easier right you know because they said oh i know you i know you i That's, know who you yeah, are yeah, yeah. so then and in nagoya we were kind of famous mm -hmm. That's right. you know and, and everybody kind of knew us and and again there weren't that many foreigners in nagoya so mm. we were really able to build Oaklawn marketing to you know f you know 50 million dollar business mm. before anybody like of the foreign people in Japan even knew we existed. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Under the radar completely. Yeah, under the radar completely. And then when, then when we, we started to kind of come out a little bit, then we just really grew exponentially. Mm. And how about the dealing with the growth? Because you're leading a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger team. So now you've got middle management, now mm. you've got structures, now you've got a lot of discipline that you didn't need at the beginning. So how did you adjust to that scaling up? Many times ungracefully, but... Um, hmm, what do you mean by that? It was a lot of failures. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? In terms of hiring? Yeah. Hiring, oh. yeah. Um, what we found was that we would try to hire out of, you know, Mitsubishi or like one of the elite universities, like a guy that went to Waseda or something like this. Mm -hmm. and, and the transition directly from, let's say, a, 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 a white shoe firm and us was almost never successful. Mm. They needed a cushion. They needed one company to go to before they came to us, mm -hmm. and then we could do it. The, the cultural difference and the support structure in, in management processes mm -hmm. are, were so different from our business and then the white shoe businesses. If you want to be successful as a leader, do the leadership training for managers course. All companies need people who can both manage and lead. Leading people screams out for real skills in communication, dealing with all different types of people, being excellent at innovation, planning, delegation, handling mistakes, doing performance reviews really well, and inspiring and motivating the team. Do the Leadership Training for Managers course now in either Japanese or English. Are you doing business with Japan? Do you really know how things work? Japan Business Mastery provides the answers. Do you have the right networks and know how to create them? Do you know how to get on the same wavelength with Japanese buyers? Do you know what being trustworthy looks like from the Japanese perspective? Japan Business Mastery is based on more than 30 years experience in Japan and will become your go-to guide. Want to succeed in Japan? Buy. Japan Business Mastery now. So how did, like, for example, uh, I know it was scale over time, mm. but you didn't need complex structures at the beginning because the scale was small. Mm. But at some point, you need to really have efficient, effective structures to deal with scale and mass. Mm. Did you bring in a consulting company? Did you we hire just, people who knew how to do that? We just did it. He just, Again, we just, just worked it out. It. We just worked it out. Okay. I mean, we hired people who we liked, mm -hmm. who you know didn't mind working hard, mm -hmm. and we, it was really very much a a um, built from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the big things that happened was bringing on Harry, mm -hmm. you know, because he and I were partners in, in H and R, mm -hmm. and then he went to the states. I don't know, two thousand. 19, I don't know, 96 or something. He might have, I don't know exactly when it was. But he did a pretty major real estate project there. So mm -hmm. he relocated his family to Utah. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was kind of running H&R. We hired a, a, a guy at the time to be the president. He did a great job. So I didn't have to do anything, really. He did everything. Mm -hmm. And I focused on Oklahoma marketing. And then mm -hmm. Harry came back. And, and at that time, um, I decided to, you know, just see what he thought about Oklahoma marketing. And he was interested, and then he joined Oklahoma Marketing around 2000. Mm -hmm. And then 
you know, Harry and I have always been very good at collaborating, mm -hmm. and we have um, very complementary skills. Mm -hmm. And we're not, we're, we're, I think we're extremely competitive, mm -hmm. but we're not so competitive with each other, because mm -hmm. I think we know we do different things. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he's a martial artist, well, mm -hmm. am I gonna, I cannot beat him at that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I do other things. Yeah, do. Um, Shonji Kempo, as I remember. Yeah, exactly. So, so we always were like brothers, and we just mm -hmm. kind of just pushed it and pulled it and mm -hmm. pushed it and pulled it. And I said, you got that? You got that. I'm going to go over there and go do that. Mm -hmm. and, and it was really because then it was really a little bit easier to deal with Mr. Nakamura mm. because th then it was like a, the two of us against him. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then Harry could say, I think you're wrong on that one. Yeah, and I'll, I'll listen to Harry. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so at the time, and then we would just hire people, uh -huh. and then and then we would have different. You know, we would to see a good guy over there and say, you want to come and work for us. Mm -hmm. But it was very, very hit or miss. Mm. And again, the infrastructure, the consulting infrastructure doesn't exist in Nagoya, mm. frankly. Mm. Um, once we kind of relocated up to Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And that was really after I left mm -hmm. from this day-to-day -day position. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, then we we did all this stuff. Mm. And when did it become Shop Japan? Shop Japan was probably early on. I think it was as a brand name. As a brand name, right? Because Oaklawn Marketing, there was the Japanese word loan. It was like a loan company, uh, Sarakin, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And then I think was, there's an Oak Lawn Cemetery someplace in California. Yeah, that's true. So there was always that kind of stuff out yeah, there. Yeah. And then we just kind of, then we, we, we hired some consultants and we went around and everybody kind of put 10 names into a bucket and who would he like the best? And as it turns out, it was Shop Japan. Mm. And, it, and it turned out good, you know, and then that's H&R became Reload Japan. Mm, so we, right. we yeah. kind of had this series of, yeah. I can't remember exactly what year, 90s, yeah. sometime yeah. In, in the 90s yeah. that we did all that. And by this time, you know, at the time you were, you were sort of coming off from the mm. driving part of the, the business, Oklahoma, to Shop Japan, how mm. big was it, the operation by that time? I'd say 100, 150 people and, mm. and, and maybe 150 million, like 15 billion. 15 billion, yeah. Point, what, what's, do you, Hyaku Gojuoku, is that yeah. 15 billion yeah. or 1.5 billion? Yeah, was it Jugooku? Hyaku Goju. Hyaku Goju, well, that's 150 million, right? Yeah, USD, yeah. 150 that's million USD. That's yeah, a yeah. lot. Um, yeah. Hmm. Well, that's big, and 150 people is big too, so. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. are you running 150 people? I mean, by this time, yeah, surely you've got, you said you had a president in place. Yeah, yeah. So, so, I, so I, 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 was the, I was the CEO. Mm -hmm. um, Nakamura was the Semu. Right. We had, you know, just a typical structure. And then Harry came in in 2000, and then he went over to the call center to kind of straighten that out. And then he moved over to the product management, straighten that out. Um, but we had an HR guy. But again, it's all Nagoya. It's not, it's mm -hmm. just, we had an HR guy that was okay. Mm -hmm. You know, but it was very much a, a top-down mm -hmm. leadership style mm -hmm. from, from, from me and Nakamura. So it was really an old style Japanese old style. leadership. Yeah. yeah, and again, that's really all I knew. I mean, I used to work construction, my uncle's construction company, and he'd show up on the job and they would be listening to what he, and then my other uncle was the foreman on the job. Mm. So you just, you know, you're, Took orders. you're told what to do. Mm. You know what I mean? So my management style is really, you know, a long history of being bossed around. <laughs> you know, I'm the eighth of nine kids, right? So I've been bossed. <laughs> quite expertly my whole life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's better to boss than be bossed is yeah. really what I decided. And I guess you're not looking for, at that point anyway, I, I, I suppose between Harry yourself and Nakamura-san, mm -hmm. the three of you are constantly trying things, tempting, yeah, right. you know, fate for different things and mm -hmm. experimenting. So the that innovation package is basically in the three of you sure. as opposed to trying to get innovation out of the right. team. Right, but we person. created a U.S. company Okay. A subsidiary in the U.S. that mm -hmm. that scoured America and Europe and all over the world for successful infomercial shows. Right. So w our model was find a successful show somewhere mm -hmm. and bring it to Japan. Right. So we really weren't merchandisers as such. Right. We were Japan market entry experts. Right. So if you got something you sold successfully somewhere, we can sell it in Japan. Mm. That was really our. And model. we can localize it with the of labeling and delivery Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got all that, and all, all of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we only we didn't want to do it for them. We 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 became the owners for Japan. 
Right. Like all these products here, we yeah. own these you, products. You actually, yeah, okay, these are Japan. Well, the Magic Bullet, somebody else owns it, but we have exclusive rights right. for that product for, right. for right. Japan. And so in terms of, from a, a leadership mm. point of view, I take it, you know, eight, number eight out of 10 kids mm -hmm. being bossed around by everybody, <laughs> you know, uh, Nakamura-san, very old style Japanese yeah. leading everyone. What's some of the things you, over the years that you learned lessons about leading in Japan that mm. you hadn't really realized at the beginning or did you uh, find anything you thought you know what I wish I'd known that you know when I started hmm I, I think the, the what I know now is, is is to be a little more slow mm. you know what I mean like mm -hmm. take it easy mm -hmm. I was very very impatient mm -hmm. And not for any particular reason. Mm. It was just, it all had, had to happen pushing, now. Pushing, pushing, pushing a little um, I, I think my style has changed in terms of, in, you know, introducing patience into mm. kind of communication, let's say, mm -hmm. and the expectation of when you're going to get mm -hmm. the answer. Because our business is, is, is a re evolving business mm. every year. Mm. You know, and we don't have these the legacy model of the you know cell phones, for mm. example, or automobiles, or mm. you know even the restaurant that you know mm. somebody's coming to over and over again. We have to sell everything to kind of a new customer every month mm. with our media. So you're you're so so that style of you buy the media, you air it, the phone rings right now. You answer the phone, you write it down, or you type it up, you ship the product, and you get your money three days. Mm. It's a very fast-paced mm. business. Mm. And, and that speed at the beginning kind of just enveloped us all. Mm. And, and so now it's more, I'm trying to be more contemplative, and I'm mm. trying to be more long-term planning, and, mm. and we, we really never slow down enough to probably automate as much as we should have because mm. we've muscled through mm. and that's really where I think that and Japan's not really a big AI society right. here right Imagine. and and Japan's been very much a hardware driven economy mm -hmm. so that's where we have been and what I'm trying to do now mm -hmm. is I'm trying to to, to, to kind of bring, I spent a lot of time in China, so I, I, technology mm -hmm. is being used way differently in China. Social media, mm -hmm. sales technology, mm -hmm. um, algorithms, and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to educate my my, my team mm -hmm. um, in in terms of understanding what data science is, but more importantly, what it isn't. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that's where my shift. Mm -hmm. is, is, is been and if I would have known mm -hmm. now I would have started this transition a long time well a couple of things happened there one is at some point you sold the company yeah. or part of the company yeah, or all yeah. the company I can't remember what the percentage was but I think yeah, it was yeah. quite a big chunk more of the company more than half how about that yeah, more yeah. than half right? so a big chunk of the company yeah, yeah. quite early I, I would yeah. think in the whole scheme of things well, the, the history is this I mean I, um, <laughs> Harry came on in 2000 you know, and then I left, and it was clear that that again I really didn't have the um, stamina hmm. to bang through and and kind of just dot the i's and cross the t's and and just do it. And he did. Hmm. That's an observation I had. Well, I've known him a long time. So, and there were a lot of different reasons, and I just kind of wanted to take a step back. Mm -hmm. So, I left in 2004 and handed it off to Harry. Mm -hmm. And he goes, how long are you going for? And I says, I don't know. <laughs> right? and, and I said, well, how, you, how long do you think you want to do this for? And he goes, I don't know. But my youngest isn't, my, when my youngest graduates high school, I think I might be done. So these, this is the level of conversation we're having, you know? Mm -hmm. And I said, how old is your son? He goes, eight. And I said, oh, great. <laughs> I mean, don't worry about that right now. So, so what happened was then I, 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 we located the family to Shanghai. And why was that? 
you know, a million different reasons. I, I just, you know, I, I, I felt I've done all I could do. I think Harry could have done it. I think he, he could. I thought he could have done a better job than me. And in fact, he did it. He did a fine job. Mm -hmm. Super, super, super good job. I don't know if it's better than me or not, but it's pretty undisputable that he did a kick-ass job. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then throughout all that, then Do the Docomo story started. Mm -hmm. You know, they, then that's when they bought half. Mm -hmm. um, so I was already a foot and a half out. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it was a, a very nice um, payday. Um, and again, I had big vision of them, like at Docomo, man, NTT. It's like, wow, this is for a guy, an outsider. It's huge. To become kind of an insider, like I, I don't want to work for the phone company necessarily, but wow, that was a great, mm -hmm. um, you know, recognition of, mm -hmm. of I think we did something right, mm -hmm. you know. So, so it felt great to do. Um, mm -hmm. They're still in the in the in the mix, um, mm -hmm. and I'm the, still the second largest shareholder. Um, but, you know, so but from so a it's not a listed company then. No. Still no. privately held. We were never listed. Never yeah. listed, right? Even Docomo's private. And now, so, so was your idea to take the same model to China? Or it was. That the thinking, right? it was. That's what we did. So late, early in, in the late 90s, mm -hmm. 98, I did the same model in China. Mm -hmm. So I, I invested some money in China. We called a company called Acorn International. And at the beginning, it was really did well. We did TV shopping, same thing. Some of the products overlapped, but mostly not. It was a very different model. Different the, market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, different market, and, and, and the cost, the prices were really, mm -hmm. Japan and America have a parity in terms mm -hmm. of cost mm -hmm. and pricing, mm -hmm. what consumer you know, incomes mm -hmm. are and things like that. China was much, much well, starting out in the, in the 90s. Well, now it's it closer to parity, but mm -hmm. for certain sectors, a couple mm -hmm. hundred million people. But, um, and then it worked, that worked out great. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I... I um, was that a separate... Uh, separate ...financial completely. entity completely? completely this is your separate. own money, your own exactly. risk, everything there. Right? Exactly. In terms of, you know, just interesting, you know, yeah, I yeah. mean, this is a podcast on leading in Japan, yeah, right. right? But it's just interesting, you know, in terms of your experiences leading in Japan, was there anything you could sort of transfer across to leading in China or just completely different and you just know, no it, relevancy? You can transfer it once you realize that it was yin and yang. All right, okay. If, Talk about that a bit. Well, it's... China is just the yin of Japan's yang. Mm -hmm. It is. It's. It's everything mm -hmm. is very, very different. Mm -hmm. Like, but it's so completely different that you can kind of predict the the differentness mm -hmm. after at, once you realize. Mm -hmm. Outwardly, it's pretty much the same. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's another eight big, you know, monster mm -hmm. Asian country, and mm -hmm. but but just the the the, the, the entrepreneurial spirit mm -hmm. there is intense. Mm -hmm. The the independence mm -hmm. um, is tense. The 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 here the the the, the conformity is intense, mm -hmm. right? The, the 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 desire to not stand out is mm -hmm. intense mm -hmm. to many people's detriment. I mean, mm -hmm. in terms of leading, because mm -hmm. you want them to hey stand up. Mm -hmm. You take a swing. Mm -hmm. No, no, I don't take a swing. Mm -hmm. China, you're saying it's not your turn to bat, and they're swinging. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> So it's very, mm -hmm. so it's very, very different. Mm -hmm. um, here, it's you're pushing. There, mm -hmm. you're holding, holding them back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, so you've been away in China. You've come back. You come back as a CEO. Harry stepped out. Mm -hmm. Docomo is a big company. This is now a big operation. So, what was your approach to leading it the second time round? Yeah. So again, I felt two big things. Mm -hmm. One was the organization I left. Mm -hmm. was very different than the organization I came back to, mm -hmm. much to Harry's credit. Mm -hmm. um, and we had our new partner. Mm -hmm. So when I left, there was no Docomo. When I came back, there was Docomo. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in terms of the dealing with um, working with Docomo, um, it, it has been, um, um, as you can imagine, it's, it's not a simple process to deal with such a big company. No. So this is this is a topic that... Although I wasn't running day to day, it's a topic that Harry and I talked about constantly. Right. Even when I was not here. Yeah. Um, and you, you know, it was one of the situations where I was hoping that they had a better plan to incorporate us into their business. Right. But what we learned quickly mm -hmm. was that the big companies, unlike you know, our our size and our, our the mentality of our company is they're shifting people all the time. Mm. So the people who did the deal, 
we closed, you know, March 31, you know, to get it into that fiscal year because April 1st is a new year. May 15 is the shift day at Docomo, and some of the people who were like saying this is a great deal, they were shifted to some other job. Mm. Right? And he was very sympathetic to what we were talking about three months ago. But the reality was his new responsibility had nothing to do with the success of Oakland Marketing anymore. It was some other guy mm. who didn't necessarily not like us, but he mm. was just, and again, we're not a big portion of that person's portfolio. Mm. So that was the hardest part mm. of the transition between a big, big, not a transition, but the onboarding mm. of, let's mm. say. Mm. It was just a constant um, shifting of personnel. Mm. Everybody was super competent, mm. super smart, mm -hmm. right? NTT hires the best, mm -hmm. um, motivated. No one's lazy, mm -hmm. right? But it took a while to get them up to speed. Mm -hmm. Then you get them up to speed, mm -hmm. and they moved on. All right. <laughs> so, 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 so the the collaboration mm -hmm. was was a little bit disappointing from, from, from that respect mm -hmm. um, and harder to manage than we thought. Mm -hmm. but, but at the end of the day, I think that, you know, we're overconfident in what we think is right. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm sure we're right, but we think we're right. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been doing this for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so when I came back, there was a little bit of a, also a little bit of a disconnect with some of the employees. Mm -hmm because they could have been working for the company for 10 years. And they've just seen me as a picture on the wall mm. or this guy that walks in once in a while for the board meeting mm -hmm. and always got a friendly comment. Mm -hmm. But what does he know about the business? Right. You know what I mean? Right. So there was a little bit of that. Right. And you don't, you don't, don't you know, I built this business from nothing. Oh, it was, it was more, about, more like, tell you about the early days. I, I, it was, again, I came in with a softer hand than that. And, and it was, it was almost the other way around. Okay. It yes. was, oh man, what do you know about this business? Oh, you're just some investor. Yeah. You know what I mean? They don't, I mean, they, they yeah. don't know. They, you know, they didn't know I was in old man Yamazaki's warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. Stick filling boxes, up. man. Yeah. They don't know why. I even tried to take some phone calls back in the day. They don't know why I was on TV. Yeah. So they lost the thread. Yes. So, yes. so then that leadership mm -hmm. skill to allow someone the grace mm -hmm. to say something ignorant, mm -hmm. uninformed, and, and not react to it, and not react to it. That and takes, again, that that's new. Discipline. That's new for me. That takes discipline. Yeah, that is what I'm saying in terms of, what, yeah, you know, yeah. what I would have told my old self, do more of that, man. Yeah, shut that guy down. <laughs> Just do more of that. Don't be your yeah. natural, normal self. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, because, you know, you know I mean, get my Irish up here. And, uh, <laughs> but again, that was, yeah. that was a little bit difficult. All right. You know, because, and it was a little surprising. They were surprised that I, that I, I knew the in intricacies. Mm-hmm. Harry certainly did. They were used to the CEO. It wasn't like Harry was like a like a non hands on leader. He was mm -hmm. super hands on. Mm -hmm. They just did not expect it from me. From you. Because yeah. I was gone so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long time. It was fifteen years. Yeah. That's a long time. Yeah, and then again you, you know I mean so like Rubble still skin a, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, a little back. bit. A little back. bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so so again that that is from a leadership perspective and I think it's taken a while. And then right when we were just kind of getting into a groove, corona happens, yeah. COVID happens, right? Yeah. And then we're all distant. And that was not a great thing, I don't think, from a management. It's hard to manage through was that. Was it good from a business point of view, though? Because people was good and bad. Time, right? The first year was fantastic. <clears throat> yeah. But then after that, it got a little bit troublesome because we couldn't get together to make the shows. We live by our shows. So we're like a, a TV, we make TV shows. Right. But if you can't get together to plan and yeah. sit around a table like yeah. this, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you can't get into the studio, that's, they're relatively crowded, you know, mm. um, yeah. events. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? There, there's a lot of people doing a lot of different things. There's no distancing in the no, studio. No, and then you, you know what I'm saying? So, so th that was hard. Mm -hmm. So again, so we, we've kind of feasted and famined and feasted and, and you know, so the whole, it's a little bit of different. Has it come out of it now? We're starting to come out of it now. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're, more of us are back in the office. Um, and I think that's, that's important. I like the idea of you don't gotta come in every day, but you gotta come in three, four days a week. Tell you a funny story about Harry. Okay. Uh, I visited Harry. This is before we did the mm. podcast years ago. And um, I'm a visitor, right? Yeah, yeah. So I come through. He showing me around the office. Right. And everyone stands up. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's Omotenashi. Everyone Nashi. stood up. Local and marketing Omotenashi, yeah. I couldn't believe it. Exactly. Huh? Like, normally you visit an office, no yeah. one even takes any notice. But I come through and he'd say, oh, this is Greg's story. And everyone would stand up. Nak that's a Nakamura. Yeah, really. That Is was that, right? that was the that was the Japanese respect. Right. If wow. a guest comes to the office, yeah, you stop what Everyone you're doing, stand up, you look at him and you bow down and you say welcome. Mm -hmm. See, but then again, that's there's magic to that. So it's he was happy? gruff. Yeah, it does. But I mean, it, it, before COVID, it's, it's, before it, COVID, yeah. Like but again, we don't have any guests come in. Barely, you're yeah. like, you yeah. Know. yeah, 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 yeah. That's our that's our that's what we do. Mm. Well, the Greg story, star power. Had oh, really, it had a lot to do with really it. Because I think up they there, stood you know? up a little taller. Sharp you know what I mean? <laughs> they stood up a little taller. But it was fantastic, you know, yeah, because yeah. That's, that was, as you say, it's we very, get a lot of comments it's on very that. old school. That's Nakamura, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in a lot of ways. Yeah. It's respect. Yeah. And again, so again, that's, I think, one of the great things of Japan. Mm. We're going to incorporate that mm. into our business. Mm. We're not getting rid of old things. Mm. We're getting rid of useless things. Mm. That's useful. Mm, it's yeah. useful. You know, it makes you feel great. Look at you. You're talking about 20, 20, 10 years later, probably. Oh, yeah, I can't remember. It was a long time ago. But it was right? selling it. It's, yeah, it's stuck in my but mind. But the, the employees, it, it helps them. It struck me. You know, I thought, wow, okay, that's, whew. Yeah, yeah. You know, something. Yeah, something yeah. differentiated. If you're going to give some advice to someone, you've got so much mm. experience in market entry. I understand that. But in terms of, it often happens, you know, okay, mm. Robert, Go to Japan, run an organization in Japan, you know. We'll see you in four years, five years, mm -hmm. and you come back, right, type of thing. So they're jetting in. They don't know Japanese. They don't know Japan, but they've got to, they know the business. They mm -hmm. come from headquarters. They've got to run the operation in Japan. If you're going to get people like that who is on that task of taking over an existing operation in Japan and running it, mm -hmm. what would be some advice you'd give them? What I would do is I would pick your fights, mm -hmm. you know, because there are so many... Um, differences mm -hmm. you need to separate material differences and immaterial differences mm -hmm. and again what just the style was th there are certain non-negotiable things mm -hmm. in terms of what you need f as a manager to accomplish mm -hmm. but then there's an awful lot of leeway in 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 terms of determining the pathway to that to that accomplishment mm -hmm. that's what i would advise a kind of non-Japan mm -hmm. expert right. for Japan. Mm -hmm. And and I would I would recommend they learn some Japanese. Mm -hmm. It goes a long way. Mm -hmm. It goes a long way. A little bit it, goes a long way. It does. And it's just the the um, the effort. Mm -hmm. And it's the, you know, again, their guy's only going to be here three to five years. Mm -hmm. Everybody understands that. But almost to the person, including their families. Mm -hmm. It turns out to be an enormously impactful time of their life mm -hmm. for their wife and kids and the whole family. Mm -hmm. And and it's better to embrace it. Mm -hmm. And and it, it is somewhat of a path along the the, the, the career path, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. a step along that, that mm -hmm. path. Mm -hmm. But the the ability to really try to appreciate the different mm -hmm. uh, kind of approaches to the same goal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, is something that, that mm -hmm. is pretty Many valuable. Paths to the top of the mountain type exactly. of idea. Yeah? Exactly mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. um, and, but, and that's because yeah. the, 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 the overall quality mm -hmm. of, of, of the, the, tr you know, the level of um, um, the Japanese workforce mm -hmm. is quite high, mm -hmm. fundamentally. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, and, you know, the attitudes are right, mm -hmm. so you, you have a great resource here. Mm. And to dismissively say, "Ah, that's not how we do it," mm -hmm. it's kind of a, missing the point. Mm. 
Mm. You know, it's kind mm. of missing the whole point. And women are completely underutilized. Women. Women. Mm -hmm. And again, so, you know, and they're just like, you know, the outcasts. Mm. There's still a lot of that in this society. And there, there's diamonds in the rough. Mm. Mm. You know, and that's, I don't know if that would be necessarily advice to these big companies because they have such a recruitment yeah. gauntlet mm. that they're only getting from the best of the best. But mm. I wouldn't overlook that. I wouldn't overlook that at all. Mm. And what would be your definition of leadership? I would say someone who can make a decision without all the information mm -hmm. and can can function um, gracefully with the abundance of ambiguity. <laughs> nice, you know, yes. and that's that's what a leader does. Yeah, and I'm thinking, you know, you're probably, I think in my experience anyway, the most successful entrepreneur about that. You know, that I've met in Japan mm -hmm. who's come here with basically nothing mm -hmm. and has built a business and, and built an empire basically huge. And so you've really, I think, you know, you've set the bar very high for entrepreneurship. I know there's startups and mm -hmm. unicorns and all that type of stuff. Sure, right? I sure, get all sure, that. Sure. And that's sort of a modern thing, but this is really a... A traditional business mm. in its sense to start from nothing and build it. what you've done is phenomenal so mm. very impressive well thank you again and i've watched fun. your progress over fun. the years it's from afar fun, yeah, yeah. and always thought that wow you know yeah, amazing mm. amazing progress so well done well done well it's uh, thank you for taking the time and listening no, to, a, to an, an old you. story you finally get on the show yeah, yeah. Now, so thank you thank, thank you Robert. thank you appreciate it yeah no great thank you so join us again for our next episode of japan's top business interviews.